In this tutorial, we will take a more detailed look at how to troubleshoot a faulty air conditioner that has a low refrigerant charge and possible leak. In the Course Resources page, we are going to select Play Split Residential Air Conditioning System. Under the Training Scenario tab, we will select the ninth scenario in the drop-down box, System Refrigerant Undercharged, and press the Start Scenario button. Our smartphone indicates that the customer has no cooling. We will first go inside and take a look at the thermostat. To move, use your arrow keys on the keyboard. I'm going to click on the door to open it. The thermostat is to our immediate left when we walk in. Let's click on it to get a closer view. Now let's turn it to cool. Note the thermostat is set for 60 degrees and originally read 90 degrees. Let's exit the thermostat by clicking the orange X button. The red particle animation coming out of the supply duct indicates that the air conditioning is not working and blowing hot air into the living space. Let's take a look at our troubleshooting guide to understand what the problem could be. The third tab on the left is the troubleshooting tab. Let's start at the top. We did confirm that the thermostat was set to cool with an appropriate temperature setting. The first major step in assessing an air conditioner is determining what loads are running. This includes the indoor fan, outdoor fan, and compressor. Troubleshooting usually employs a process of elimination which will save time and money. We know that the indoor fan is operating because there was airflow coming out of the supplies. As we walk in the garage, we can confirm this by listening to the indoor fan motor running. Let's go outside to investigate the compressor and outdoor fan. We can immediately see that the outdoor fan is operating because it is spinning and blowing hot air out of the top of the condensing unit. We can also hear the hum of the compressor. But let's confirm that by using our ammeter. With one right click, you can recenter your frame of reference to get a more accurate or detailed view. Let's zoom in on the compressor wire, which is the black wire located on the back left of the contactor. The wiring diagram, especially the color version, and the labeled diagram are helpful in identifying key parts of the air conditioning system. Let's click on the tool tab and select the clamp-on ammeter. Let's place it on the compressor wire, which has a helpful glowing hotspot for placement. A reading of 11 amps confirms that this is the compressor and that it is operating. The outdoor fan motor would only have a reading of 1 or 2 amps. Since we know all three loads are running, we can conclude that the problem is mechanical and follow the steps in scenario 1. Let's click on it. First, we are going to see if there is any debris, like grass or leaves or garbage, on the condensing unit. It looks clean. Next, we'll confirm that the filter is clean. Let's go to the indoor unit to take a look. Okay, I've pulled out the filter and it looks clean. Now we're going to check the superheat. First, we will want to measure the indoor wet bulb temperature. We will do this with the psychrometer at the return vent of the indoor unit. Let's open up our tool tab and select the psychrometer. We will place the icon in the glowing hotspot in the return vent. Now let's click the wet bulb button because we want to measure wet bulb, not dry bulb, temperature. We have a wet bulb temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go back to the troubleshooting guide and look at the next step. We want to measure the outdoor dry bulb temperature near the condensing unit. Let's go there. Using our psychrometer, this time on the dry bulb setting, we have a temperature of 95. Our next step, according to the troubleshooting guide, is to assess the R22 refrigerant pressure and temperature on the suction line. The suction line is the insulated one going into the compressor and we will use the manifold gauge to determine pressure. Select the low pressure blue gauge and place it on the service port of the suction line. 
We have a pressure of 50 psi. We can determine the evaporation temperature by using the provided pressure temperature chart. According to the chart, a pressure of 50 psi corresponds to an evaporation temperature of approximately 26 degrees. We now need to calculate the actual temperature of the suction line using the clamp-on temperature probe feature of the multimeter. I'm going to select the multimeter out of the tool tab and move it to the temperature setting. Let's place the probe on the suction line. Our temperature reading is 75 degrees. We can now determine the superheat of the suction line, which is 75 degrees minus the evaporation temperature of 26 degrees, which yields 49 degrees of superheat. The superheat charging table will tell us whether this is an appropriate level of superheat for the given ambient conditions. The superheat table is available when the manifold gauge is displayed. To get the superheat table, just click on the pressure table. You can toggle between these two charts. We have an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 95 degrees, an indoor wet bulb temperature of 70 degrees. This means we should have only about 18 degrees of superheat. Our level of 49 degrees of superheat is too much and indicates a problem. When we look at the table on the bottom of the troubleshooting chart, we can identify the probable cause in the second column as leak low charge because we have high superheat and a low compressor amperage of 11 amps instead of 15. Before we add refrigerant to fix the problem, we'll first want to do a leak test on both the outdoor and indoor lines. Your leak detector is in the tool tab. To use the leak detector, move the device along the hose, especially near valves. We have confirmed that there is no leak. To add refrigerant, pull out the manifold gauge, attach the blue hose to the suction line, and select the green tank to add refrigerant. Though the stars have indicated we have successfully fixed the system, you should always confirm that the superheat is at the appropriate level for the given conditions. Let's also check to see if cool air is coming out of the supply vent. Let's remember to put covers back on and clean up. Good luck, and remember to be patient.